So this is our day trip to Gibraltar from Marbella. I've heard different things about making people making it difficult to get back into Spain. We will document this active update as of August 2024. So we decided to go by bus, uh, quite simple to do, from Marbella. Um, uh, the bus was about probably about an hour and you once you get to the bus stop you then have to have a walk so the big question is is did we have any problem going through customs no issues whatsoever bear in mind this was a sunday so i'm not sure if it was quieter um, but we had literally no issues there was like maybe two or three people ahead of us in the queue and got swept through and then the first thing you find when you get actually through to uk soil is a supermarket we went in looking for sun cream didn't find any and as a result we paid the price um, later on this is the kind of weird bit is after the supermarket you end up basically walking across an active runway there are only a couple of flights a day um, but yeah it's pretty surreal lots of questions like do they have a crew you have to then go obviously sweep in and check in the runway for issues. But uh, yeah, that's a, I think that's the first time I've walked across an active runway. We first for me. were there for a day and a half. We decided to stay one night. Initially, we were going to look for maybe three days. Um, but the, our plans changed and we did. We had an early bus in the morning, got there about 10, 10.30 and we were leaving on around about five o'clock the following day so we had a kind of tight schedule the initial plan was to get up early the next day and go for the, the walk but we changed that plan after having something to eat quite a cool place very unusual it's uh very spanish very english uh, this was our hotel we decided to stay on the sunborn uh, it, it says it's, I think it's, it's like a floating boat hotel. It's not float, it doesn't float, it's attached to the land. So if, you, if you're worried about seasickness, don't worry. Uh, pretty cool, a bit pricey for what we would normally pay. But then obviously we travel mostly in Southeast Asia. Um, but we thought, well, we're only there for one night, let's make it a bit more of a different kind of experience. Really nice place, five star uh, boat hotel. Quite small though. A little bit smaller than I expected and one of the things I thought was going to be on board was a casino but the casino I think due to Covid and um, that's sorry not Covid due to Brexit was relocated next door um, so you didn't get that kind of you know boat casino experience. Let's say really nice, nice facilities. Two one. The room is pretty good, as you will see. Although I would question, I think it's a five star, but uh, I would I would say the room is more like a three and a half four star. The bathroom is really nice, but some of the stuff in there was maybe a little bit on the older side. I'm not sure how old this hotel is. say so bathroom is really good and unusual in that if you like to dump in peace then there are no doors to the entrance to the bathroom and obviously someone could go to the toilet while another person is having a shower so it's a bit odd and obviously this is the wardrobe that links cool. through visually through. through to the other side it's quite cool oh If you're a smoker, then you cannot smoke on these balconies. You have to have one of the uh, more expensive rooms with a more of an open plan to be able to smoke. I wanted to smoke a cigar, but I, obviously I couldn't. Got a cool little drinks cabinet.
So we had a little tour, we walked around. Obviously we wanted to check out the gym. The gym was quite small, you could get a reasonably good kind of cardio light workout in there. I wouldn't like to be beneath the gym if you were staying there though. I'm not sure how thick these, just want these floors are. Thank you very much. This is the the dining area and breakfast area. This was this was nice. The breakfast was good. Good international breakfast. I didn't film the breakfast. I should have filmed the breakfast. I apologise. And well, it was Sunday. This was this was the strange thing, as you'll see in one of the videos later uh, in the video later on. It was actually quite quiet on the streets compared to the next day. But when we came to the attraction of going to the, the rock, that was really busy. So God knows how busy it is on a normal day or whether this is, you know, that kind of thing is something that's more popular to do at the weekend. I'm not sure, but you'll see a, a big contrast between Sunday and Monday kind of floor, foot flow traffic through the main street. So this is the top deck going through to the kind of relaxation bar lounge area. They have a pool, I would say it's more like a big bath than a pool, very small. But we didn't, to be honest, we didn't actually hang out there. We, uh, there was too much to do, too much to see. If we were there for a few more days, probably would have. But as we were only there for a day and a half, we wanted to kind of get moving. We stayed in this, this new kind of dock area and then to the main street was a very quick walk, maybe a maximum 10 minutes, easy to get to. It's hard, I think, to get lost in Gibraltar because it's a very small place. It's good, it's a nice mix, a mix of old historical things and newer things, and it's again, that odd mix of British exactly. and Spanish. Uh, accents, I heard, well, a bit of a mix, a lot of British accents with a Spanish hint, quite a lot of Spanish accents with no British kind of tinge to them, and this was the high street, so you, can, you would see this, I don't know whether I filmed it, um, on the Sunday this was completely different, this was full, lots and lots of people, we tried to get coffees in a couple of places and they were, they were all full. So just imagine in that shot you've got a hundred people plus. Uh, obviously we, we had passed the gym and decided let's go and have a little look at this place. Unusual place. This is this reminds me of an old gym I used to go to at Birkenhead. Very odd. Making use of every space kind of for fur. Looks to me like three people's houses knocked through and turned into a it turned into a gym. But it was, you know, it was decent. It had a, a little bit of everything. It would have been enough. Oh yeah, it's Panatta. I was gonna say I recognise the fabric. back into Spain because I think it's different if you're going from flying into Gibraltar and flying back out but if you're going through customs so this is one of the questions we had is that we've read a few different things that since Brexit things have been made a lot tougher I'll answer that at the end of the video uh, this was the queue bear in mind this was the very beginning of August very and we waited there for about 45 minutes and the queue wasn't even, didn't even seem to be really that big we were going to walk up, we decided, let's just do the cable car because it's hot. I don't want to be completely destroyed before we even get to the top. And we 
made the right decision. Even though it's quite expensive to go up in the cable car, you get the attractions as part of it, so it, it makes sense because you can have to pay anyway. And we decided to go up on the cable car and walk down instead. Uh, but like I said, it was the right decision because when you get to the top, there is a lot of walking. If you want to see everything, you don't have to do a lot of walking. And a lot of the walking was uphill. So if we had walked this whole way, we would have been like basically sweaty messes. And bear in mind, we didn't have any sun cream. So we made, made a good call. Walking down, it seems to just go on forever. And it's one of those ones when you, you know, your toes are literally get smashed to the front of your shoes because every step is downhill. Um, so if you're if you're not moderate, if you're not in a, a reasonably good condition and it's hot, then go up and down on the cable car. But bear in mind, it, it's harder to see a lot of the uh, attractions because some of them are on the way down. This is the view from the top. Pretty spectacular. Pretty, uh, you know, worth it. It was expensive to go up, but it was definitely worth it. Cool view. The weather wasn't phenomenal. If you, if the weather was clear, you would be able to see Africa. Um, uh, but in this case, it, it wasn't, so we couldn't. No. Monkeys, people were getting very close to these monkeys. We saw them later on sitting next to them, you know, literally within touching distance. Never trust the monkey. I've seen these things in videos in Africa, grabbing people's scalp and literally peeling the back like they're opening a can. Uh, they're vicious, savage beasts. And although they look cute and highly likely nothing is going to happen, I wouldn't trust them. Coke Zero, if you must know. We were absolutely, after that wait to get into the cable car, we were, you know, pretty exhausted before we uh, even started. This was the Skywalk, and to be honest, I think it was pretty pointless. It didn't stretch far enough over to seem like any kind of attraction. It just looked like a big platform on top of a rock. Um, this is quite cool to do. This is, uh, you know, not a huge walk, but this is, I think, uh, I can't remember what this was. I think they stored artillery there as a battery or some kind. I'm not 100% sure, uh, but it was quite cool. Um, I remember seeing this on some of the other people's videos. Obviously, a lot of people go there. It's wall-to-wall -wall graffiti. But that was quite cool to do. Not a lot of people did it, and if you go through dead ahead through that hole, which you're not obviously not so supposed cool. to, to do, you can get quite close to the edge and sense a bit of danger. The view is no different to anywhere else on the rock. It was more just the uh, going in there that was the cool thing to do. So this is the little uh, kind of stretch on the ledge I was telling you about. Something in, when you get to those kind of edges, something and you just basically just switches off and says, that's enough. You know, I had visions of me going right to the edge, but uh, thankfully the sensible part of my brain took me out of it. The hardest bit. So this was the start of a big walk to go and see the caves and the uh, guns um, and this was this is probably the hardest bit yeah just be prepared this is a long incline walk without any flats and any shade really and it's a little bit shade the beginning of august it's hot the sun's right up overhead Woo. god just imagine how horrendous this would have been this engine all this, this is an engine. Mm -hmm. 
long arms, aren't you? Oh no. We were quite tired and hot, and I think if we'd done this on a cooler day or a cooler part of the day or a different time of the year, then we might have been able to kind of, if, if we were more prepared, we would have had more time to uh, read a little bit more of the stuff, watch some of the videos, do a bit more kind of research to make it a little bit more interesting because we kind of got up there and just kind of whizzed through everything because it was. Uh, a long, a long afternoon. Ready for it? Thanks to the wonders of modern technology. We're on the rock in Gibraltar on the way down and of course I don't have to miss any of the Olympics coverage thanks to the uh, special SIM card deal I got. Mm -hmm. So the question uh, you might have then is, is how easy was it to get out? It was very easy, no issues whatsoever. We literally went through, went through customs, and we were back in Spain without any questions, no stopping, no messing around. Super simple, super straightforward. Um, literally, I can't think of a single thing. There was there were more people on the way back out, and I'd heard stories of, you know, that they were asking for, you know, proof of income, proof of a, a, a ticket to your ongoing country, because. I uh, maybe this is a little bit old information, but I think they're trying to make it difficult for people to leave Gibraltar back into Spain because of Brexit. But we had, from our experience, no issues whatsoever. So that's all I can say. No issues. Whether that will uh, go for someone else, I don't know. If you've had any issues, put it in the comments, then people can at least kind of cross-reference uh, a different experience. But that was it. Well worth going. I enjoyed it. Um, I would probably go again maybe as a stopover or if I went back to Spain, but I wouldn't travel to Gibraltar to stay in Gibraltar 